Inke dink, 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 inke Our, wait. Basil, wait, 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 we're getting ready to do hour 600 of the Basilathon, and, and I'm hearing, what are you watching? We were supposed to be watching, uh, you wanted to watch Progressive Soup, my TV show. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a second. That's not Progressive Soup. Good evening, welcome to Progressive Soup. <laughs> Maybe it is. Basil said, Meow. said, look, well, who wants to give me the extended version of it? Meow. Said the, ex- he told me he wanted to watch Progressive Soup while we were doing the show. Yeah, you know, because I mean, after all, you know, I'm, well, we have a difference of opinions. I say, that I, through Progressive Soup, got him Basil Buddha Cat Presents exclamation point. And uh, that was back in uh, January of 2012. And now he's telling me he's telling me that actually he got me he got, he got me an in to do Progressive Soup. And he had Basil Buddha Cat Presents planned out all along. But in 2009, he thought he'd do me a favor and get me in with uh, Dave and Candy at Comcast and get me a show so that he could be talking to them behind the scenes and saying, look, you know, I can, I brought you... I brought you this dork, and he gets he gets a fair amount of viewers. Imagine what what a show would be like with uh, Mr. Dork as my co-host, interpreter, and chief gopher. Gopher as in go for this and go for that, not the little furry thing that, that would, would look more like more like Basil certainly, and uh, not not feet as big as Basil's um, big and comfy slippers. But um, that would prove. To Candy and Dave, the Basil certainly was qualified to have have his own show if he could nurse me through Progressive Soup. But this is not... You want to watch Regressive Soup? What? No, it's Progressive Soup, not Regressive Soup. Okay. Said, uh... He said, but regressive soup is more fun. It's um takes a lot of the a lot of the uh ideas from um Marty Heiser's show, which is um unbelievably named the Marty Heiser show. And uh Who's the other guy? Basil says he's not sure, but he thinks the other guy's name is um, something about his last name is Straight Jacket, and it's got some show on that's kind of like Marty Heiser on steroids. And uh, but what he likes, he likes a show called Regressive Soup because he says it's you know, it's like Fox News. It's 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 bright and blue, red and blue and green and white and all kinds of uh, well, red, white, and blue at least. And it's um, it's entertaining and uh, mesmerizing, and he likes that better. He says he likes that one better than Progressive Soup. What's wrong with Progressive Soup? Said, <laughs> said progressive soup 
it's kind of drab, too much talking, too many words. Puts him to sleep, it's, um, he likes to watch that when he's getting ready to take one of his six a day cat naps. <laughs> six, six a day, well yeah, said, uh, he said he learned that from, um, well yeah, yeah, I better quote you first. So you learn that from um, Ron and Nancy Reagan's cat, because um, they taught Ron that you make the best decisions when you're sleeping, and that way, while you're sleeping, you can have your wife consult the astrologer and and make the decisions for you, and in the meanwhile, you get a good nap in. It'd be like Dad would bum, bum stake you, but you can uh, get up and uh, nosh on a sandwich and uh, <laughs> Basil said no. No rebar? Yeah, yeah, this is rebar. It's <laughs> said, uh, yeah. says, now it's time. What a good time to step in and uh, hand out. He's been wanting to hand out these pretty regularly while we're doing the uh, Basilathon. And we're up to hour number 600, and this is like, I don't know, the 20th time that we've actually got this. Uh, this is a lion, lion-sized Hershey's Kiss. Um... I don't know if it's before or the after. It's it's hard to tell. But um, Basil says um, when he was doing a safari on the veldt, found quite a few of these laying around, and uh, he just figured that they were um, they were Hershey's kisses. Because I mean, let's face it, you know, we're, just take a look at the darn thing. So he says he's been wanting to give out these awards to a deserving deserving corporations. That have that have shunned them in the past, and uh, well, your own fault. It's you know, it's really your own fault, because let's face it, what you did is you took um, a company like uh, A and W Root Beer and uh, turned it into. Well, I got to put this back down over here. Okay, I have to get it smudged on the keys, the piano. Um, took a good company like A and W Root Beer. Soup. Uh, this is yeah, see, not uh, Wednesday evening, but soup. for all practical purposes, we'll call it Wednesday evening. Um, Said enough. Well, he didn't have to say it. He rolled his eyeballs. He flicked his whiskers. Um, all of them. Not just the third one on the right-hand side or the uh, the hairs inside his ear. Or didn't flick his ear. Just closed his eyes just a little tiny bit closer to being shut for a moment. And said, uh, enough. So, um, you took a product like A&W Root Beer, and all of a sudden you're making it out like it's, um, it's P-A-N-W Root Beer, Paw Root Beer. And, and then, he's, then he's interjecting into the show, how is the audience going to know? The Basil's root beer of choice is beverage of choice, for that matter. Well, Schweppervescence, the Schweppervescence and Schweppes kind of fizzled out. But he said, um, how are people going to know for sure that P-A-N-W root beer is his beverage of choice? And all you have to do is um, take a look next to the rebar, or a slightly smaller version of this, of this uh, in Basil's cat pan. And that's how you know. So, so you want to watch regressive soup, okay? Okay, um, okay, okay, okay. He says he also is trying to get get latched on with um, the Clinton campaign. Been reaching out to them. He's been reaching out to Robbie Mook, and. Um, he knows Robbie Mook from when, uh, from when he used to watch the Seinfeld show, and he saw the episode where George Costanza is playing uh, Trivial Pursuit with, um, I don't think it's Susan's family, it's somebody. Um, 
And, oh no, he's playing it with the Bubble Boy. And the Bubble Boy is called the Bubble Boy because he's in this uh, plastic container because he's uh, got, uh, he's hypersensitive to all kinds of, um, all kinds of uh, allergies and things. And he's in the hospital and George goes and visits him um, on his way up to uh, the cabin. The Kramer burns down and uh, that's, you know, that's incidental to the story, I guess. But uh, so he stops in and sees the Bubble Boy in the hospital. And the Bubble Boy wants to play Trivial Pursuit. And he gets down, Bubble Boy gets down to the last slice of the pie and he's heading down the home stretch down to the center. And the question for the win is, who invaded Spain in the 1500s? And the answer, of course, is the Moors. But, amazingly enough, there's a misprint on the card. The card's got it spelled wrong, and it's, it says the Mooks. And uh, George jumps out and says, no, it's not the Moors. Look, it says on the card, the Mooks. And the bubble boy starts going crazy and coughing and sneezing and throws something, and, the, and his oxygen tent starts to starts to deflate and all kinds of all kinds of zaniness like zaniness like yeah you had on Seinfeld once in a while or all all the time. So um so so Basil's been on the phone with Robbie Mook from the Clinton campaign. And he says that he's got a great commercial for Clinton. He's gonna prove once and for all that Hillary Clinton is gonna be an aggressive it's gonna be aggressive pro- progressive policies. You know, the policies that Bernie Sanders believes in, and, and all of a sudden, um, Hillary Clinton has latched on to, she and her campaign have latched on to the, uh, the notion that uh, the $15 an hour pay, pay, uh, pay mark that, um, that uh, Bernie Sanders has been pushing for, and that uh, California and New York State have recently passed a graduated step into $15 an hour's minimum wage. Uh, Seattle did, uh, uh, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and then the whole state of New York City, then the whole state of New York, and the whole state of California. And uh, Sanders has always been for that, and, and, and Clinton kind of went from being, well, you know, how about $12 an hour, which she probably could have gone to Congress and gotten... Uh, and gotten the uh, a pay raise, a minimum wage raise of about twenty cents an hour. Graduated over the next eighteen years. So, so she changed over on that one. Um, universal single payer health care. She's all of a sudden it's well, you know. But then she says, well, but you know, uh, Mr. Sanders doesn't seem to have. Um, any idea of how to pay for it? How are we going to pay for it? And uh, of course, the answer is we already do. We pay um, twice as much per capita than we have for for decades than uh, most of the other advanced nations on Earth that have um, universal health care for all their citizens. Uh, some countries are three times. Um, the United States pays per capita three times what other countries do. It's just crazy. So the answer to the question is, well, how are we going to pay for it? As we already do. You just have to uh, take the HMOs out of the equation. They have to put it under um, under Medicare, which uh, which is uh, run very efficiently. It's a great program. It works fantastic. It has a very small two to three percent overhead uh, for administrative costs. Um, where um, HMOs average 30%. And now under uh, the Affordable Care Act, they're, um, they don't have that 30% anymore, but in order to get the uh, Affordable Care Act through, through the uh, corporate geeks in Congress, I think they're guaranteed it's either 15% or 30% profit margin. 15% or 20% profit margin. And uh, so all these things that, uh, that Senator Sanders has been for all along, Clinton's starting to, and that's, and that's what happens when you run, a, run a, a strong campaign and look like you've got a reasonably good chance of, of actually winning. And uh, we're not out of it yet. Uh, we've got uh, New York coming up um, on Tuesday. And uh, 
The polls, uh, the polls shows uh, Senator Sanders to be a little bit behind. It was 10, 12, one point it was 20, 30 percent, then down to 10 or 12 percent. The most recent one says 6 percent. And uh, like all the other states, it comes down to uh, the youth vote. If um, young people who, um, and I say young, I mean people under the age of 30, they, um, they've gone very strongly for, for Senator Sanders, 80 percent to 20 percent. Likewise, um, male and female younger voters have, um, have voted or caucused for Senator Sanders um, by sizable margins. So, um, so he's going to talk to Robbie Mook. He's got um, he's got a, a good advertising. He thinks to um, to put it in, put it in football terms. I know we're out of season now for football. Football season is over, but um, Basil's got an ad, and this is how it goes. Huh? Said. <laughs> said. Um, yeah, good. You could say it. Says, here you go. Here's our series of downs on every bill that we want passed. And we'll push all those bills hard. Um, Mrs. Clinton's going to push all those bills hard and, and she's going to work really hard for all these progressive causes that all of a sudden she's latched on to. Oh, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the, uh, the latest and greatest uh, sellout of the American worker to, uh, to other countries and, and corporations that move to other countries. Um, so that's another one that she's um, all of a sudden, she helped write the bill um, from her seat in the Secretary of State's office. And uh, she wrote the bill, she helped write the bill, um, and now she's all of a sudden, you know, when it's clearly unpopular, now she's all of a sudden against it. And uh, we don't know how long that's going to last, if it would survive an inauguration or not. So Basil's got this notion, and he says, think of it like a football game. We got the ball, it's first down. And what do you do? You run on first down. Okay, so you get a yard, get two yards. Okay, now we're making some progress. Now we're now we're going for now we're going for universal health care. Now we're going for uh, college education that's shared as a country, the same way that we share public education, kindergarten through twelfth in America. Okay, we got second down and it's eight yards to go. Okay. Now we're going to really surprise him. We're going to run the ball. And sure enough, look at that. Five-yard gain. Look at that. Nice. Seven yards. Two plays, seven yards. And uh, we're on the move. Now we can. Now we got them on the run. Now we've we got them thinking run. What a down to run on. Third down and three. Okay, um, so you come out of the huddle. Everybody goes. Everybody, you know, grabs every other member of their team's ass, and a uh, little little slap on the buttocks, and uh, come out and yeah, and and they're looking they're looking pass, and uh, quarterback goes back, hand off, and you lose three yards. Fourth down. Six yards to go, seven yards to go, whatever. Six yards to go, and then uh, you have to punt. So, and then you say, well, you know, we tried. We tried real hard. We, uh, just like we tried back in uh, 1993, 1994, when, well, when uh, Mrs. Clinton was uh, uh, President Clinton, his wife, uh, her husband, President Clinton's uh, um, person, push, person pushing for... Um, for health care, for a health care plan that would uh, either curtail costs a little bit and uh, and maybe get a few more people on. Because we know that we've lost we lost a lot of people in those 20 years since until uh, Obamacare passed. And now we've got, um, um, we've gone from about 45,000 Americans not covered by health insurance um, or getting health coverage except out of their pocket. And, uh, and that, you know, that's fine if it's a doctor's visit, but if it's, um, if it's a medical emergency, if it's a trip to the emergency room, if it's an operation, uh, that tragedy is responsible for 50% of the foreclosures in America. It's not that people were buying houses they couldn't afford. They were buying houses 
they had a tragedy, couldn't afford to pay a hospital bill for a family member, and yeah, tough luck, and they lost their house. <laughs> so, and they couldn't they couldn't declare bankruptcy because you know then they then they were playing out of luck if they needed to uh, if they needed to, to modify their mortgage because they couldn't. So here's so here's the plan. We're gonna we're gonna run on first down. We're gonna run on second down, and just as a little change of pace, we're gonna run on third down, punt on fourth down, beg the Republicans in Congress to uh, to not turn the clock back more than they already have, and that's it. You know what I think. You know what I think, Basil. You know I, you know what I think about that ad. You know what I think. I think the media is going to say, "Wow, what a great plan! Steady as you go, uh, good plan." Uh, um, as they're getting their palms greased by uh, by their corporate masters, uh, the uh, pharmaceutical companies, uh, the the HMOs. And uh, the media will go for it immediately and push Americans to uh, to to get behind this this great health care plan, this great plan that uh, that Mrs. Clinton is putting forward. And uh, never mind that that thirty plus other countries in the world that are advanced countries to some degree. They're what's called industrialized countries, countries that are um, that are not agriculture anymore, principally that are that are regular regular economies like we have, and uh, universal single payer works great in those countries. People go in. You're not going to get cosmetic surgery. You're not going to. If you want that, you got to pay. If you want um, state of the art stuff. Then you're wealthy. You might want to do that, but you do that in America too. I mean, you know, people uh, people get that stuff in in the United States. So um, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Went to an event. Uh, Mr. Pietras and I went to an event. He went there also. We had some friends of ours that went to an event on Thursday night. Uh, where Elizabeth Esty, who is the uh, congressional it's progressive soup. Connecticut's fifth district, which is, encompasses Danbury, out toward uh, Chester. All right, your show. Okay. He says, if I can't find regressive soup, then he probably wants to watch the Marty Heiser show or um, uh, or uh, Marty's friend, uh, last name um, Straight Jacket. And that's uh, that's what he wants to watch. I mean, you know, he's loud, abrasive, a little bit of screeching, uh, a lot of laughing, and uh, not the uh, not the brilliant red, white, and blue of Fox News, but those kind of ideas being put forth. And, uh, uh, come on now. Wait, wait, wait. You want... Okay. Walter! Walter! Nah. Nah. I think she's off this week. I think she's on vacation. She said that, um... Walter said something about being burnt out from the, the 42nd uh, work week. The cleaning in the house. That, that That's the chore. And, uh... Sometimes we make her work overtime. Why Walter? Why 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 is Walter a sheep? Okay, well if you watch the show before, you know that we've got uh, Walter Forrest Cat and uh, Walter came to us when she was about three months old. And she came advertised as a male. And uh, not that, that mattered to us one way or the other. I mean it's not India where her parents uh, are much more interested in male children than female children because cause apparently it costs you a lot of money to get rid of a, a female child when they get married. You gotta you gotta pay the other family. You gotta make give gold out all over the darn place. And uh, 
So it's um, so she comes to us, and uh, by the time she's um, five or six months, they're saying to us, "Oh, didn't you know that um, a male cat's testicles sometimes don't descend till they're what, five months old?" And at that point, she's five months old, and then she's six months old, and we come to the realization that Walter is not a boy. That uh, Walter is um, a Norwegian forest cat, to be certain, and what separates them from um, Maine Coons is that they have claws that are adaptable so that they can actually climb down trees. She can go head first down trees. They don't have to pivot around and they go down backwards. They can right down the tree. And uh, amazingly enough, um, that's, that's what separates them from, uh, from a Maine Coon. It's big, big fluffy tail. They get to be pretty big. A um, lot, of, lot of fluffiness around them. And uh, very different from... Uh, now Lil. Lil was a calico. Um, through three colored cats, some black, some brown, some white. You see her in the, um, with Basil, you see her in the entry to the show, and uh, Lil passed away. And uh, lo and behold, Easter arrived, and the Calico Cat returned to us as the Calico Stone. And you can see there's a little bit of rusty brown in there, there's a little bit of... Um, Tawny, there's a little bit of um, gray, a little bit of black, a little bit of white. And Lilith weighs about the same amount as she did in, in when she was uh, three days, when she was, you know, pre, pre-calico stone days. And uh, so she came back, she came back as a calico stone. I don't know if she um, happened on Easter. I'm not sure if she moved, moved the stone out of the way. But she came back and... Uh, She's obviously up above, and she's on the... Lil? Are you there, Lil? Yep. Okay. She's on the 24-7 line. And, uh... We call her on, we call her on the phone occasionally, but uh, she always, she's always on the phone listening in, because, because uh, you know, she was Basil's main squeeze, and, of course, he sees her constantly, because he's up there, too, and, uh... In, uh that great uh, A&W root beer, P-A-N-W root beer, and Hershey's Kiss and Rebar Repository in the Sky. So, we talk to her occasionally. Um, we're almost out of, we're almost out of, out of time for our, first half of our number 600. Do you actually want to talk about anything in, in, in particular? Okay, he said, meow. Says, um, shut up and do try to do a commercial. Because we're looking for corporate sponsors. We need one. Uh, where we lost P A and W root beer for some unknown reason. We lost uh, Hershey's Kisses. We had uh, we had a, a hand lotion from. Um, Abbott Labs, and uh, which has since actually, actually become, um, they've renamed themselves Wabbit Labs. So they might have fired everybody, they might have a whole new crowd there, maybe we can get in with them again. Because, um, because Wabbit Labs is working on a medication called, um, and they did it on the, at the behest of uh, the presidential candidate from 2012 on the Republican side, um, who was the owner of Little, founder of Little Caesars Pizza, and they're doing a, a medicine called Little Seizures Pizza, which apparently it, um, it causes all kinds of uh, synapses to go whirly gigging off and not working, and then uh, and then the second half of the pill kicks in and, and relieves the symptoms. So um, so it, it it's great for um, great as a party gag or a for a house party, you know, you can take it, start, you know, messing around on the floor, and and then uh, and then jump back up and and sell stock in the company in uh, Wabbit Labs and Starkist, and uh, 
No time for that, huh? Okay. Well, Basil Buddha Cat presents. I'm David Stevenson, uh, Basil's co host, interpreter, and chief gopher. And uh, we'll be back in a moment with uh, the second half of the Silithon 2016, hour number 600. They say they'd rob your grandma blind on Wall Street, on Wall Street. Fritter her, her away her Medicare on Wall Street. And pharma oil and their pet fox don't care if she lives in a box. So long as they wear platinum jocks on Wall Street, on Wall Street. Wow.